And Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, thanks for being here. Thank you. A, a new CNN Time poll in New Hampshire has you in third at 12 percent, and the same organizations uh, in Iowa have you at third in 12 percent. What do you see as your path to the Republican nomination? What do you have to do uh, in these early states? Well, you know, a lot of individuals come and go in these polls up and down, and my support has been pretty steady and, and continues to grow. So I have to continue to do what I'm doing more so, and uh, we're very pleased with it. We raise the money that we need. I need to be out there campaigning. Uh, we do our television. But uh, we have to do well. Uh, we have directed most of our attention to New Hampshire and Iowa and Nevada, you know, the early states. But I would say that uh, come January, it'll be make or break for us. There's no doubt. You've just raised about $2.5 million on this money bomb, right. and you've done this a few times. But this one specifically points to uh, what organizations that are tied to your campaign, Black This Out, say is uh, not unfair media coverage. And, and the, the quote is, you are trying to control the outcome of this election directed towards the media and will never cover in fair, reasonable, and journalistic media manner, the only candidate that can beat Obama, so we have resolved to counter your efforts, and you raised a lot of money. Do you believe you're getting unfair treatment in the media? I don't know. Uh, I think it, at times it's distorted, uh, but I don't know if I want to use the word unfair because I know how the media works. I mean, there, this is one thing when I essentially tied, you know, in, in Iowa for the uh, aim straw vote. I mean, it was barely mentioned. Sometimes it would be mentioned, oh, they know who's in first and third and fourth. So the supporters don't let anything go by on that. They Tell usually... me about it. <laughs> uh, but I, I try to think about my policies and keeping up with the news. Just for but the, for the you. record, you have appeared on Fox uh, since your announcement that you were running a total of 43 times and 70 times since uh, January of 2011. Oh, I'm so, so tired. I'm tired. So we are giving you a lot of time on this channel. Steve. <laughs> Congressman, I've, I've spent some time over the past couple days with your plan to restore America, and there is, I think, a lot in there that Republican primary voters will like, eliminating government departments like Education, HUD, yeah. and others. One thing that I think might raise eyebrows is the cuts in defense spending, some $200 billion below President Obama's fiscal year 2012 yeah. levels. Uh, former Defense Secretary Bob Gates said that such cuts would be catastrophic in terms of our capabilities, and I wonder why people should trust your judgment over that of Bob Gates. Well, I think what is catastrophic is uh, what's happening to our debt and the world financial system, and part of it is our military spending. See, I don't cut defense. I cut military spending, which doesn't, from my viewpoint, you know, help our defense. We're, we're all around the world spending a lot of money. But, you know, even if we go down to the 500 or so billion that I talk about, we'd still be five times more than uh, what China would have. And if you look at all our spending plus all our allies, uh, it's literally 70% of all the world military spending. We have so many weapons. Nobody's, who's going to attack us? Nobody's on the verge of invading us or attacking us. So I think the crisis in finances has driven me for 40 years because I got involved in this because I saw what was coming uh, once uh, you, you know we accepted this new monetary system and everything is a part of it all the spending but you know this this uh, sovereign debt crisis is about to explode in our face today I thought it was pretty uh, interesting to know that the oldest bank in the history of the world since the 13th century is on the verge of going broke so that tells you how significant this is so I don't feel like I'm taking any thing away from what's saying I think we're stronger when somebody like Bob Gates and, and other uniformed military leaders say Defense that your Panetta. Panetta and others, Joint Chiefs uh, and Chairman nominee, uh, say that this is weakening America's capabilities. I mean, there's no question that it would leave America a weaker nation. Well, you don't I, think I, so? No, I just disagree with him. But he also said that uh, anybody who thinks about another war, another invasion, needs their head examined too. So I'm trying to head that off. No, I wouldn't do it if I thought it was weaker. I believe strongly in the Constitution. There's only one group that can have a strong national defense. That's the federal government. But I think uh, the participation in bankrupt in this country will we'll be defeated more by what's happening here with our finances. Another downgrade coming? I mean, how long can we continue to do this? And, you know, in theory, we're borrowing this money from overseas in order to keep this military operation going. But I don't think for one minute we're going to be less safe. Matter of fact, 
a lot of people could make an argument that uh, we, we could be more safe if we concentrated on defending this country, worrying about our borders and wor instead of worrying about figuring out where the borders are between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Speaking of banks, Juan? You know, uh, Congressman Paul, I, I wrote earlier this year, this is the age of Ron Paul, because, <laughs> you know, you look back at the 08 campaign and a lot of the things that you stood for, the debt that you're now talking right. about, smaller government, that became the heart and soul of the Tea Party and the Tea Party movement. Now, as you watch the Occupy Wall Street movement, do you see them as reflecting some of your anger and frustration with the Fed and with the federal government, Wall Street? Yeah, I do. I don't think that, you know, I can say, well, everything that's happening on Occupy Wall Street is something, you know, that I fully endorse. But I think it's this frustration. Uh, I think it's the frustration with the American people, not, not just tired with Obama, but tired of the Republicans. They're looking for something else. So this is why the election occurred last year with a Tea Party movement. But that hasn't satisfied everybody. This is why I I didn't like the idea when I think Kane said that these people ought to just go out and get a job. Well, I blame the victims. But there are some there that would advocate positions that I bet we might agree we shouldn't be advocating. I, I advocate the market, but I complain that this 1% are very wealthy because they, they get benefits through the inflationary system, through the contract system, through the military expenditure system, through the bailout system. So I identify with them, and a lot of them are anti-Federal Reserve people that are there. But some of them just say, well, the solution is just raise taxes on the rich, and they put everybody in the same category. Everybody who's made money is a bad person, and I don't believe that. Congressman, on the issue of immigration, this is what you said in, in one of the debates. Uh, take a listen here. I think this fence business is designed and may well be used against us and keep us in. In economic turmoil, the people want to leave with their capital, and there's capital controls and there's people control. So every time you think of a fence keeping all those bad people out, think about those fences maybe being used against us, keeping us in. Charles. Keeping us in. Uh, any piece of territory, large or small, that is fenced in and for the purpose of keeping people in is by textbook... Um, definition, a prison. Is the United States a prison? Well, I think, uh, you know, there was a, um, Iron Curtain once. I think of what we're developing here as a financial Iron Curtain in a way where you can't travel back and forth. I've lived on both borders. I did my medical training, some in Michigan and some, in, and I lived in Texas. And it was always nice that I could go back and forth with no, no passport. So it's very difficult. So not only do we, we use the excuse of watching for the bad guys coming into our country to control us. Currency and capital controls are very common when you get into difficulties. I'm worried. I'm thinking about the financial controls where you don't have freedom to leave, and they already do exist. Uh, people who expatriate. Uh, so that wasn't they're, they're, literal. The, your your fence. Reference. Well, I, I was thinking of it probably more in, in finances, but, you know, if it deteriorates, if, if our system deteriorates, which is quite capable, when this thing breaks down, there will be more people control. These ID cards, you know, the ID cards, the real ID card they had. Well, one reason why the states didn't like it, well, it costs money, but that means you and I have to carry it or we're discriminating. So we say we want to protect the borders and that, so we end up with the ID card. What, just this last week, they're, they're checking people in Tennessee, you know, uh, just like the TSA on our automobiles. Congressman, in this century, capital travels through computers, not in a suitcase across the border. Are you worried that Americans are going to be stopped at the border with a fence and not allowed to leave? Financially, I think they will. Even with computers, they can put a lot of controls on you. But with a fence, that doesn't. No, yeah. no I don't. I'm not that's, even for a fence. That's not going to stop a wire transfer. Well, well they they uh, they can put financial controls. They've had wire transfers for years, but they have tax. You know, the IRS knows what's going on. You have to report everything. So what I want to do is bring all that money back, not inhibit it from going out. People people have a freedom to leave. They should be able freedom to take their assets. It's a well-known fact. Now, if you say the conditions are such, hopefully you're right. I'd be nice if we can circumvent their desire. But it's inevitable. When you have financial crisis, they put on currency controls and capital controls. I mean, it's, it's been... My point is that a fence never stopped a capital, uh, a, a money a No, money it never transfer. stops illegal immigrants either. We have many more questions with Congressman Paul. The panel continues after a quick break. We're back with our center seat segment and Congressman Ron Paul now turning to foreign policy. Charles, start with you. 
you've said that it would be natural for Iran to want to acquire a nuclear weapon, and it would be of no concern to the United States. Well, what if Iran then proceeded to use the weapon to annihilate Israel and kill six million Jews? Would that be of concern yeah, I, to the I, United States? I think you've misstated uh, my position. It, it's a big concern. I don't like nuclear weapons. I, the less, the better. Uh, I have said that right now we don't have concrete evidence that uh, by our CIA or the United Nations that they're you know on the verge of it, and I don't think that we have enough reason to go to war against Iran. Uh, I went. I was in the military in the 60s, and the Soviets had 30, 40,000 of these, so I know a little bit about you know uh, confronting an enemy. But uh, Israel, you know, has a few of those weapons themselves, like about 300. Uh, I think Israel sacrifices way too much sovereignty to us. You have to ask us to to deal with their borders and what they can do, uh, both defending their borders or dealing with their friends. And right now, Israel is more vulnerable than ever because of the breakdown of all our puppets over there. But Af Ahmadinejad, the Iranians, they're not going to attack somebody with a weapon they don't have. They, they're not even capable of producing enough gasoline you, for themselves. Would you keep sanctions on no. Why, why put sanctions on them? We took sanctions off the Soviets, and they murdered hundreds of millions of people. You know? Congressman, in the and debate... in China, the same way. We, 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 we dealt with... The Chinese are pretty vicious. So far, the, the Iranians have not invaded any other countries. And uh, I, know they're, I know they're very difficult, but they haven't invaded their neighbors, and they haven't been threatening to invade us. In the debate, you said, why wouldn't it have been natural for the Iranians to want a weapon? They'd be given more respect. Why should we write these people off? We should stay out of their internal business so essentially you're yeah. okay with Iran well, getting because, a nuclear because weapon. I can't because I can't I, I don't think it's our business to decide but a good example of this is Libya uh, you know Libya is sort of our friend and then they became our enemy and then we re forgave uh, the killer of Lockerbie and then we sa and said would you give up your weapons and he gave up his weapons then he got clobbered so uh, with NATO with us so it's a good lesson hang on to your nuclear weapons maybe they'll respect it Do, is why there any we... situation congressman where you would deploy US troops abroad if our national security was threatened and but if Iran has a nuclear weapon and it's potentially threatening us did we attack Russia no, or no. China they had a lot of nuclear weapons we didn't attack them we, that was a thousand times more dangerous so deterrence with Iran would be your policy we had lots of sanctions on Russia and China yeah but we eventually gave up and Reagan Reagan talked to him we talked to them well, and, no and we talked uh, we took off the sanctions we traded with, Ch uh, with After China years. well I, I think I think it's uh, I think it's I think it's the policy is wrong does more harm to us I think it makes Israel much less safe we have undermined that just look uh, Turkey is not exactly their best friend now uh, uh, Egypt now uh, they're, they're going to radical Islam now Tunisia it's going to be Islamic as as well so they're less friendly with Israel now so I think this is all going to back besides we're going to go broke we're not going to be able to maintain this forever and that that's why uh, I think we should have a different foreign policy and, and treat them at least equal to the way we treated those horrible Chinese. It, we've been working. See, I, went, I was in high school when we went to war against uh, Korea. And here we are all these years later. I liked it much better when uh, Nixon went and, and opened up the doors with China. I'm talking about war. You want to lift sanctions. It's not war. Well, it is a war. The first thing you do when you go to war, you put, you, uh, put uh, boycotts on them and you blockade a country. It is, in many ways, an act of war. Steve. After the killing of Osama bin Laden, you said uh, of the raid, there could have been a better way sure. to do this. Uh, would President Paul have authorized that raid into Pakistan? Um, no, I, I, since I suggested a better way, I would go so back. you would not have authorized that? Well, so Osama well, bin Laden had, uh, would be alive no, today? I said... No, no, let me answer. I said there was a better way, and the better way was what I originally said after 9-11. I voted for the authority, I voted for the funds, go after them, a couple hundred of our special forces, had them trapped, and walked away at Tora Bora. Okay, and well, that, wasted did, that didn't years. happen. I'm talking about yes, 2011. Okay. What I'm saying, he's a bad guy, we should have done it, and the ba better way was doing it 
10 years ago instead of going in and wasting all these American lives. So you would not, because that didn't happen, no, in 2011 you would not have authorized that raid into Pakistan. Well, I think since uh, KSM was delivered to us by, uh, uh, by uh, Pakistanis, that we should at least talk to them, sure. Uh, I mean, what is so terrible about that? Uh, why? But Despite right now, the fact that he was they, living they, they look at what, in look the garrison what the results city. are. I said this was a risky way because now we're lobbing missiles over there. Our drones are bombing. At the same time, as we're giving money to the government. There's a civil war going on, and we've created this because Johnson. we support a government that's very unpopular, and that's what it leads to. Now we have Karzai Johnson. saying, you know what? When we, the war breaks out, we're supporting Pakistan against America. Sorry to interrupt.